What's up guys, so in this video I'm just going to show you uh, how I've been using ChatGPT uh, alongside um, like my space repetition queue and incremental reading queue. Um, if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, it's essentially just a really smart uh, chatbot uh, created by uh, OpenAI, which is a company that develops AI models. Um, so you can go to chat.openai.com and sign up. It's completely free to try. They probably aren't going to... Um, uh, provide it for free forever because it must be costing them a huge amount to <laughs> provide this to uh, us for free uh, but yeah while it's free uh, I encourage you to go and check it out uh, the final thing is is that I've uh, been using this pretty interesting script it basically just allows you to use um, voice input to talk <laughs> to and to the messages because it's a lot faster yeah so that just makes it a lot easier for me uh, so yeah let's just uh, get into it, I guess. If you're not familiar with uh, SuperMemo, by the way, um, it's similar to space repetition systems like uh, Remnote and Anki, but um, it's really old. Uh, I would love to switch all of my stuff to Remnote, but um, it's just uh, kind of locked into here at the moment. So, okay, so I've got an article on um, recessive alleles. This actual article, I think, um, came about because I was trying to understand how dominant alleles and recessive alleles interact at the level of um, like gene expression, like how does a dominant allele uh, mask the expression of a recessive allele, because uh, I don't really understand this at all. So uh, this is like a good candidate to talk to ChatGPT about. So um, maybe I'll just start by pasting this in. And like one thing that's cool is that you can just say like explain like I'm five. <laughs> like that's actually a pretty really good, um, like a pretty good explanation. Like your five-year-old could understand that and, and it actually makes it a lot easier for me to understand. Um, obviously you lose a lot of detail when you um, simplify and explain by analogy. Uh, but yeah, so instead of uh, using like the worker analogy, could you explain it in terms of like a programming analogy because I do programming programming as my day job, so that might help. So could you um, explain in terms of programming instead? So it's pretty interesting, but um, in this case, I feel like the analogy is misleading because the recessive gene doesn't actually have anything wrong with it, or the res recessive allele doesn't have anything wrong with it. Um, it's just that it's being masked. And so actually what's interesting is that um, you can kind of push back on what chat GPT says. So if you think it's um, kind of uh, spewing nonsense or anything like that, you can actually say. So isn't that kind of misleading though? Because uh, the recessive allele doesn't have anything wrong with it. It just gets masked by the dominant allele. Okay, so now I'm thinking like a better analogy might be um, in programming, you, you can have classes which have um, methods which are like functions attached to them and um, if you inherit from a class you can sometimes override um, <laughs> override uh, the base class's methods so maybe a, a dominant allele is like you're overriding the recessive um, method <laughs> or whatever so maybe I'll try and say that to GPT and see if it can come up with like maybe an argument against it or, or more information expanding upon that I just thought of a better analogy that could explain dominant and recessive alleles in terms of object-oriented programming. If you imagine that there's a class that contains a method which represents the recessive allele, the dominant allele could be thought of as existing in a subclass which inherits from the parent class and overrides the recessive allele. So yeah, um, ChatGPT agrees with me, I guess, <laughs> that it's a decent analogy. Now I could ask, okay, now argue against that um, analogy, like what's what are the flaws in that analogy? What are the flaws with the analogy about dominant and recessive alleles and uh, object-oriented programming classes? So, damn, they... <laughs> Uh, ChatGPT gives me a pretty pretty nice wall of text um, describing one of the flaws. So what is the flaw? 
Um, it does not accurately reflect the fact that dumb recessive alleles are determined by the genes on different chromosomes rather than by the presence or absence of a specific method in the class. In real life, they're determined by the genes that are present on different versions of a specific chromosome. This analogy of dumb recessive alleles are determined by this. Mm. Yeah, I, I still feel like the analogy is good. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll create a flashcard. Yeah, a simple way would be just to say like, Yeah, that's like a common theme that I found while using it is that um, you're not necessarily um, like mining ChatGPT for concepts and ideas and analogies. Rather, you're using its output to like fish stuff out of your own mind that's already there or that um, is like waiting to be uh, connected with something else and turned into something, turned into like actual knowledge. So. So I think it's two to the end, but I can't remember why. So, uh, uh, yeah, so this is another good use for GPT. Um, if I run across a flashcard, which I, where I think I've like forgotten the, like, actually you can see at the bottom. So this means that, um, uh, I've, I've failed this at least twice, uh, and got it right once. So it's not sticking in my memory. Like I, I do know that the answer is two to the N, but I can't remember exactly why. Uh, so this is like a good opportunity to, without revealing the answer at this point, yeah, just start going through some questions with chat GPT to try and um, figure out like the background knowledge and stuff. So I'll reset this thread. Could you generate a truth table where we're checking uh, tautologies. Please, could you format the truth table inside a code block? Yeah, now it's um, giving me the truth table for some different propositional formulas, some very simple ones, P and Q, P or Q, not P. <laughs> That's weird, but, um, okay. So uh, in the propositional formula P and Q, you have two, uh, variables and, um, you have four lines that are required to check if it's, uh, if it was a tautology. So if it's a tautology, you'd be checking that in every uh, every different um, every different uh, like combination of true and false inside these variables, they would all have to be true in order to be a tautology. And so, if I have two variables and four lines, then yes, yeah, two to there'd be two to the power of two, right? Equals four. Um, if I want to verify that a propositional formula is a tautology, what is the time complexity? Yeah, O of T to the N. Well, I'm saying yeah as if it's <laughs> now true because GPT said it, which isn't uh, the case often, but... Um, Is there any way you could make it more efficient to check whether a propositional formula is a tautology? O of two to the N sounds pretty slow. Let's see if it comes up with some garbage. So that's pretty interesting. It's suggesting that there's a another method, natural deduction or resolution, whatever those are, to check if something's true. I'll just, um, and I should, I should make sure I remember it's chat GPT said this. And, um, yeah, this is kind of a super memory thing, but, um, if you, uh, 
I can add some text in here and then I can give it a priority, let's say 25. It's pretty interesting, I guess. So it's two to the end. Yeah. All right, well, I think that's good enough for today. I think that gives you the idea. I had a couple of good examples in there. Um, and yeah, I encourage you to go and try out ChatGPT for yourself. It's free. Use it while it's still free. Won't be free forever, probably. So um, give it a go.